Thanks for joining us for your First Alert Avalanche Report. I'm your First Alert meteorologist, Callie Zanandri, and joining me is the director of the Colorado Information Center, Ethan Green. Ethan, this week we've had some snow and lots of wind. How is that impacting avalanche concerns heading into the weekend? Well, the snow and the wind has raised the avalanche danger. It's raised it the most in parts of the, the northern mountains. We've had a fair amount of uh, drifting, and that's causing some avalanche problems. Here's a look at what that snow and wind does. When we get snow in the high country, uh, that raises the avalanche danger, but it's really the wind that pushes all that snow onto some of those steep slopes. You can see the drifting in that picture. And this is the type of avalanche that we start to see. So along those high ridge lines where we get some drifting onto those steep uh, slopes uh, and sub ridges, that's where we start to see avalanches. And we've started to see some of these like you, you see in this picture here. You know, we're not expecting much snow going into the weekend. How does that impact avalanche danger? Well, what it does is, uh, <laughs> what it means is that uh, the avalanche danger is not getting a whole lot worse because we have calm weather. We're not seeing that new snow loading like we just saw in those videos. But we do have some uh, problems that are in the snowpack that are lingering and they're gonna be there with us for a little while, especially through the weekend. Here's Jason up on Vail Pass and he's gonna explain uh, some of the problems we have right now. I'm here to tell you about a new persistent slab avalanche problem uh, in the northern mountains. Right now I'm near Val Pass on an east facing slope. And uh, there's a pretty prominent weak layer beneath this newly formed slab. And we've already seen a few avalanches triggered on this weak layer and um, it's really not going anywhere. So we're gonna continue to warn about it. What I mean by new persistent problem is in the past we've been warning about um, weaker snow near the ground uh, and avalanches breaking out of the ground and that's still not out of the question but the most likely place for you to trigger an avalanche is up here. And then if you do trigger an avalanche, it could step down a deeper weak layer is becoming much more dangerous. But let's check out um, extended column test. I'm almost positive it's gonna propagate. Just when I was digging out these sides, um, the slab was just sliding off of the weak snow beneath. But let's have a look. So on six taps, we got propagation. And this is about the size of the avalanche you can trigger. And like I said, if you trigger an avalanche like this, um, it could be dangerous on its own but it could start gouging into this, this fasted snow beneath and entrain a lot of snow and be enough to bury you. So the calm weather we had before uh, this recent snow and wind produced some really weak snow on the snow surface. And that's starting to get buried now. And you can see that here in this picture, we have that new snow uh, up on top and uh, just below the snow surface, you can see the surface or those big feathers. And we're seeing that really across the state. And that's that upper weak layer that Jason's talking about. But because the snowpack is so weak, if you start an avalanche on that layer, it could step down into some of these uh, deeper weak layers that formed more around Thanksgiving and potentially take the whole snowpack with you. What you're looking for are uh, signs of instability, cracking or co collapsing in the snow. And you can see one of our forecasters here was uh, doing field work, stepped out onto this slope, and this crack just shot all the way across. If that was a steeper slope, um, that would have triggered an avalanche. The other thing that we're seeing is because the snowpack is so weak, uh, we're starting to get loose snow avalanches that take the whole snowpack. This is a, a picture that, uh, in the Southern Mountains that really shows kind of a combination of the situations we're seeing now. That new snow and wind produced a wind drift up high. Um, some skiers triggered that. And as the avalanche ran down the hill, uh, it just started gouging into those uh, deeper, weak layers of snow and taking the whole snowpack with it. And it ran uh, much further than you might expect with uh, kind of that small avalanche that you triggered near the top. This is sort of what that looks like when the skier uh, just pushes those surface layers. This isn't new snow, this is just really old, weak snow. And because it's so weak, as you start to get a little bit moving, it just gouges down into the deeper, weak layers. And some of these can really be uh, much larger than you might expect right now. Typically, these loose snow avalanches in that weak snow um, are not what we're worried about. But because these are getting so large right now, they are uh, big enough to push somebody around and, and maybe even bury you, especially if they push you into a gully or um, you know, some sort of terrain feature. So always make sure, check the forecast you before you head out to the back country. But I know next week, lots of people are off for the holidays and I'm sure they're gonna wanna head out. Uh, where would you suggest the safest back country location would be for them? 
Well, the avalanche conditions are fairly similar around the state. They're most dangerous in the northern mountains right now. Uh, but there's lots of places throughout the state that people can go recreate safely. The important thing is just to know what the avalanche conditions are and uh, make sure you're going someplace, you've picked a route through the terrain uh, that's going to keep you safe. Uh, checking the avalanche forecast is the best way to do that. Um, currently, the avalanche danger is highest in the northern mountains, uh, lowest in the southern mountains, and the central mountains are kind of right in between. Right in between. Well, thank you so much, Ethan, and we will see you here next week for your first alert avalanche report.